Welcome to the Beast Rider Podcast. I am your host, Ryan Sakamoto, and today we're going to be discussing the two-game suspension of San Francisco 49ers cornerback K1 Williams. So let's get started. For those who don't know, I actually created an earlier podcast last week in regards to why the 49ers need to re-sign K1 Williams, and I included that in the description below. So if you haven't caught that podcast, go ahead and watch it because I outlined why he's so important to the 49ers organization. But getting back to K1 Williams and the news that broke that he suspended for the next two games for PED use, he is a player who hasn't really seen the field much, right? He's only played in six games, been dealing with the hip, a knee, and a high ankle sprain. And basically what you're getting this year is damaged goods. Now, is it a good long-term investment? That's up for debate. And again, I included that in an earlier podcast in the description below, so be sure to watch it so you can stay up to date on all things Beast. All right, but let's get back to this podcast and talk about K. Wall Williams in terms of why he was suspended for using PEDs. I'm going to break it down to a lot of parameters for you. Again, I'm not sure if you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. I like to make sure that all my followers can have a broad knowledge of what I have to offer. So that's why I'm giving you some background on the background I'm about to give you. Uh, For those who don't know, I'm actually a fitness competitor in the National Physique Committee who's nationally qualified to turn pro, so I'm going for my IFBB pro card. Why am I bringing this up? Because it comes back to PED use, um, PED usage. So being in the industry and being in the fitness game and then also covering the teams or all 32 NFL teams as an NFL insider analyst, I like to make sure that I cover all my bases and I'm pretty well versed in PED usage because, again, PEDs don't necessarily mean anabolic steroids or HGH, and that's total misconception. PEDs can range from a variety of different substances, and I'm going to go ahead and break those down for you. So when you see a player like Patrick Peterson last year who violated the league substance abuse policy, it doesn't necessarily mean he was injecting himself with steroids. It could be something else, all right? So let's go ahead and talk about what I'm about to talk about, which is what are PEDs? the common mistakes players make, and how one can avoid a positive drug test, okay? So let's talk about PEDs. PEDs stand for Performance Enhancing Drugs, and it gives the athlete an unfair competitive advantage, and it includes anabolic steroids, HGH, non-tropics, which is like cognitive stimulants, I guess you would say, anti-estrogen substances, uh, masking agents, which is can be included in diuretics or what's considered water pills, which I will talk about later on, and then stimulants. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about those things that I just mentioned. And before I get started on that, I want you guys to be well aware that every year the NFL Players Association has a list of banned substances, and they also have a list of banned companies. And they get this list, uh, sorry, they the players get these lists and they can cross-check based on where they get their supplements at and look at the label and be like, okay, well, it's not on here, so it's safe. That's not true, and that's how players get caught up because all dietary supplements in the United States are not regulated by the FDA, Food and Drug Administration. That's right. Everything on the label can be a total lie. So you don't know what you're putting in your body even though the label says that else else uh, excuse me even though the label says something else so you may be walking into a local vitamin shop store check out a product like let's say a testosterone booster and if you're looking and comparing it to the list that the NFLPA gives you on the list of banned substances and it doesn't show up even though it doesn't show up on the list doesn't mean it's a banned substance because you don't know what's in it because it's, again it's not regulated by the FDA. Okay, so dietary supplements are not regulated by the FDA, so the labeling means absolutely nothing if you're an NFL player. Okay, now we're going to talk about the PEDs, the different types of PEDs. The first one is anabolic steroids and HGH. The most common one that we hear about today is anabolic steroids and HGH. So let's talk about that. So you have testosterone, right? You have oral steroids such as Anivar, Winstrol, Clenbuterol, um, which you can take through an oral pill form. You can also take injectables like Primobol and Masteron, and the list goes on and on and on. Now, based on the type of steroid that you're taking, again, this is not an educational video on taking steroids, obviously. This is just an educational video of why 
players do take it or why some players take it and why obviously it's bad for you. It's bad for you. You shouldn't take it. And the reason you shouldn't take it is because although the gains or what anabolic steroids do is it builds up muscle growth while cutting down on the fat, it causes so many other issues long term, which is why it's a legal drug to take. So why do players take it? I don't know. That's their thing, but it happens. But again, I don't see a lot of NFL players taking steroids. I think it comes down to the other parameters of those PEDs that I'm about to mention. The second one, which leads me to, um, excuse me, which leads me to nootropics. Nootropics is a cognitive function, so it has to do with the brain. And Adderall can be considered a nootropic. Now, a nootropic, what it does is it provides you brain power and gives you the ability to maintain focus. So when you do that, and let's say if you're like me and have ADHD and I'm prescribed Adderall, Adderall XR, I'm able to take it as long as both parties agree to the amount that I take. So although it's a banned substance under the NFLPA, players can take it, I believe, as long as it's agreed by by all parties and prescribed by a doctor on the amount that they can take within a given week, okay? So a lot of stimulants such as nootropics are on the banned substance list, so you got to be careful what you take there. Then the third thing I want to talk about is anti-estrogen substances. Anti-estrogen substances are used when you do take anabolic steroids and you need to come down or call it's what's called post cycle therapy or PCT to help aid testosterone levels because when you take steroids you're basically shutting down your natural testosterone and then when you cycle off of it your estrogen raises up so in order to counter the estrogen levels you need to take what's called an anti estrogen substance so something like clomid or remedex or something like teslac would work but again i'm not saying take steroids is not educational video on steroids it's just i'm giving you the rundown of the banned substances of PED. So again, I don't see NFL players taking these supplements or taking these um, agents or substances, agents, whatever you want to call it, because at the end of the day, it's going to do more harm than good in the long run. They're illegal. I don't see anyone. I would say 90. I don't know the number. I'm just going to take a guess, but I would say 99% of the players don't even take. Uh, That's actually, I don't know. It's not very likely, I would say, that NFL players are injecting themselves with steroids or taking orals with steroids and then masking it with the anti-estrogen to kind of counteract that gain. Try to counteract those gains. So these are all banned substances, and they're illegal for a reason. Not just with the NFLPA, but uh, it's illegal. It's a drug, so you're not supposed to take it. Okay. Then it leads to masking agents. This is the one that I think players do take. Um, and they're called diuretics or water pills. You can get it over the counter at your local GNC store, vitamin shop. You can go to Costco and get it there. Basically, a diuretic is a water pill, and water pills can basically deplete you of water. So I know when I get ready for my competition, I take Expel or Drip Dry, and basically they're water pills to help me give that hard look when I step on stage so I look like a rock star. Now, Everybody in the fitness industry takes water pills, all right? And people <clears throat> who are professional athletes also take water pills. I know because I've seen it firsthand. But you got to be careful about the water pills that you're taking because of the fact that, again, it could be on the banned substance list by the NFLPA. So there's a list of banned companies, which I'll get into later, that basically tell you, hey, man, don't go to these retailers, don't go to these shops, don't trust these brands because they're not going to help you pass a drug test if you're drug tested. All right. So again, don't trust the labels. If you're an NFL player, I would just stay away from all these substances altogether and just do it naturally from food and hard work and get the nutrition and the gains that way. All right. Last but not least, again, you can go and do your own research on this, but we see a lot of weight loss pills, a lot of fat burners. Those are also banned substances, male male enhancements, and I'm not talking about Cialis or Viagra or anything like that. I think that's excluded from the list, but male enhancements called testosterone boosters, which I do take. That's a banned substance in terms of on the NFLPA list. Testosterone boosters you can get at like a local GNC store or you can get on bodybuilding.com, over-the-counter stuff. It's not illegal to take testosterone boosters. Now, Under the NFLPA, based on the labeling or based not on the labeling because you can't trust the label, 
it's probably safer for an NFL player not to take testosterone testosterone boosters because again it can trigger a positive test so if you don't know what you're taking you can be misled and the best course of action that I always tell players or I always tell friends or you know family members is be careful what you're taking because if you don't know what you're doing you don't know what you're putting in your body and if your body is your soul and your temple then you need to make sure that you're taking the right corrective actions to ensure that you know you're safe in the long run and that's why it's so crazy in the dietary supplement world that you really don't know what you don't know you know have you ever heard that quote you really don't know or you don't know what you don't know and if you don't know what you don't know then how do you know what you know you don't <laughs> and uh, that that holds true with PEDs like players don't know what they're taking and you really got to trust your inner circle inner circle and even then so be extra mindful because you can place your trust in someone that they will get the right supplements for you and it's not going to trigger a positive test but at the end of the day you should be doing your own research because at the end of the day you are the one responsible for injecting it or not injecting but but like taking it in your system and if you're not careful with what you're taking into your system it could be all hell right so getting back to injections like like if you took like for IV right a lot of people take IV so going back to um diuretics right you see a lot of nurses and stuff like they give IVs right IVs and you can inject IV well some IVs are considered diuretics and on the NFLPA banned substance list so unless it's administered by a doctor you probably shouldn't be taking any injectable IV to hype with hydration or whatever the course of action may be. All right. Well, that'll be it for today. I don't know what K- people are asking me. What did K- What do you think K-Wall Milliam took and how come he's not disputing it? You know, I'm not going to go into the details as to why he's not disputing it or what PEDs he takes. This is just more of an educational video on the NFLPA stance on PEDs, a little educational video on that. And all I know is the NFLPA get to list of banned substances, banned companies, banned retailers. They give it out and send it out to each player. And so they have a list of everything that's good for them or bad for them or to be wary of. Anything that's male enhancements, anything that's fat converters, anything that's fat burners, things of these nature can be held accountable if you're taking these substances and it triggers a positive test. That falls on you. All right. And for those who are asking me about fat burners, yeah, I take fat burners. I mean, if you're in the fitness industry, why wouldn't you take fat burner? Um, fat burner is great. It's a thermogenic. Anything that's a thermogenic, it raises your what? It raises your your temperature internally, heats you going, uh, heats you well, heats you going, heats you up, keeps you going strong, and it really powers through your workout. And you get an extra pump that way. It creates it creates a lot of different avenues, like creates your blood flow optimization, things of that. It has a trigger effect now it's not a steroid like again you can find this at your local GNC store you can find it at your local Costco these are these are things that you can get over the counter I spoke with many players who in the past who have tested positive for PEDs and they really don't know like man I don't know what I took right like I have no idea like obviously it's you know it's obviously it's not steroids because they would know and they wouldn't be disputing it but some things that players take a simple protein powder can trigger a positive test a simple protein powder can and I'll talk about protein spiking in a later episode because I think protein spiking is one of the things that people don't realize and I'm going to teach you what to look for in protein so you're not getting screwed over for the most bang for your buck on protein powder Um, there's a lot of companies out there who do protein spiking and that's a known thing but if you don't know what to look for then you really don't know if you're getting the the best bang for your buck because again Whatever it says on the label is not regulated by the FDA, so how do you know what you're really getting? All right, well, that'll be it for today. I hope you had what I'd like to offer. If you did, please hit the subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner of the screen as I keep all things beast. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Beast Rider, out.